Only the French can make a people carrier look interesting. In fact, this new Citroen C4 Picasso is so stylish that it makes you kind of want one, even if you don't actually need an MPV. Yes, it may still effectively be a box on wheels, but Citroen has added so much jewellery that it's more like a Tiffany box on wheels. And just like with one of those, what's inside is even better. The C4 Picasso's dash design is so contemporary, it's worthy of its own exhibition at the Tate Modern. What's more, Citroen has thrown so much kit at the car, it almost feels like a mobile Apple store. All cars come with climate control, Bluetooth and DAB digital radio. They also get this rather nice touchscreen. And if you go for an exclusive model, it actually gets stuff like satellite navigation as standard and this rather lovely 12-inch high-definition screen up there. You can choose what you want the screen to display and even change the colour scheme if you like. That's not all though. Using the car's USB port, you can upload a picture, say, of your other car, to use as a background image. The new C4 Picasso may be high-tech, but it's still very practical. It has a very low load height and you can fold the seats down to turn it into a van. And with them up, the boot is the biggest in its class. The C4 Picasso has three individual seats and they've each got ISO fix, so if you've got triplets, you can have three baby seats in the car. You've also got a completely flat floor, so the person who gets the middle seat isn't inconvenienced. The picnic tables are robust and they fold down rather than up like on some other MPVs, so they're a bit more robust and can hold a drink. You can also recline the seats on all models and on the exclusive models, you can slide them as well. Also on exclusive models, you can fold down the front passenger seat. Of course, safety is key for a people carrier and all C4 Picassos come with front, side and curtain airbags plus electronic anti-skid control. Lane departure warning and blind spot monitoring are also available on the options list. You can get the C4 Picasso with a choice of petrol or diesel power. The best bet for most people will be the 1.6 litre diesel with 115 horsepower because it's smooth, it's quiet, it's reasonably swift and it'll return over 70 miles per gallon, which is incredible considering the size of this thing. It might be larger than the average hatchback, but this MPV is still easy to drive around town. The controls are light and the gearbox is quite slick actually for a Citroen. And of course you've got good visibility because of the raised seating position. You've also got quite thin A pillar there and a large quarter light and that helps. Plus, check this out, right? You can slide these back to reveal this lovely panoramic windscreen. You also have an excellent turning circle which helps low speed manoeuvrability and makes parking easier too. But if you need more help, you can get the MPV with self park which can get you in and out of a space and also bay park. This people carrier is pretty good on faster roads too. It's quiet at speed and it's comfortable and you know, handles pretty well too. The only thing is though, when you really push it, you do start to notice that it's dynamically inferior to a 4C Max. It does roll a little bit more in the corners when you go a bit too quickly and the steering doesn't really feel like it's connected to the front wheels. And then when you go over uneven road surfaces, the otherwise comfy suspension starts to fidget about a bit underneath you and if you've got kids in the back and they're asleep, it'll probably wake them. And that's kind of how it is with the rest of the car. You see, at first you think the C4 Picasso is totally brilliant, but after a while you start to notice its French foibles. For instance, if you want to make your driving position nice and high, which you probably do in an MPV, these sun blinds actually get in the way of your head and you have to slide them forward out of the way and that spoils the whole panoramic effect of the windscreen. And there's some other things as well, such as Yes, the dash looks great because it's very minimalistic and there's hardly any buttons. But say if you want to suddenly alter the temperature, you can't just swivel a dial. You have to first access the right menu for the climate control and then do it. Now, that doesn't bother me too much, but I know that it might annoy some people. 
And then there's all these electrics in the car, you know, this is a Citroen after all, and they're not best known for their reliability, are they? In fact, the firm came in the bottom quarter of the 2013 Driver Power Owner Satisfaction Survey. In fact, if you want to, you can rate your car by visiting driverpower.co.uk. Other niggles include the quality of the optional exterior cameras. These give you a bird's eye view, junction view and rear view. However, the low resolution images they produce are worse than the video you get from an old one megapixel camera phone. And while there is plenty of space in the back with lots of knee room and decent headroom, the car's curved side means that this pillar just seems a little bit too close to you when you're in one of these outer seats. It's a bit annoying. Finally, while there are plenty of cubbies, including some in the front seats and under the floor in the back, Citroen couldn't be bothered to move the fuse box as well as the steering wheel over to the right hand side for UK models, so the most important one, the glove box, is half the size it should be. Yeah, thanks guys. Now the fastidious Germans would never allow something as annoying as that on one of their cars, but then on the flip side they wouldn't allow their designers to create an MPV as flamboyant as this. And ultimately that's the reason why I'd like a Citroen C4 Picasso, even though I don't actually need one.